Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, hello, happy Thursday. How's it going? We ready to sew? I'm ready to sew. I feel like it's gonna be all the fiddly stuff, you know, flaps and pockets and prep and stuff like that. Um, and maybe figuring out placement for my knee pads and stuff like that. Yeah, so <laughs> there's a lot of you already here. Nice to see you all. Thanks for coming. Um, what are you guys up to? Not working. <laughs> no, I mean, maybe you are. <laughs> so to the yesterday, yesterday we cut out the Sequoia cargo pants. I'm doing the pants by itch to stitch designs. And this is, this is them here. So uh, while I was in, um, interfacing everything yesterday after the stream, I was ironing everything on. I noticed two things. I, I cut something I shouldn't have. What was it? Oh, oh, I think I cut interfacing for the whole leg strap piece when there was already an interfacing pattern piece for that. And I realized too, I don't want flaps on every set of pockets. I think it's just a little too much so I'm not gonna put them on the back pockets I'll still put them on the side pockets so <clears throat> yes working I won't tell <laughs> so <clears throat> welcome welcome <clears throat> I haven't talked to anybody all day I've been up for five hours and I haven't talked to anybody so <laughs> you know how that is mm, that's great Jim you're finding it you're finding that stuff. I mean, the guild is amazing for this. Like, isn't it crazy? Like, it's, for me, it's crazy. Like, I think I know, like, oh, I know where to get anything I'm looking for. And then someone posts something so specific. I'm like, well, I don't know where to get that. So that's amazing. <clears throat> well, you know, I talk to the dogs. But that voice is a different voice. That's my dog voice, you know? And a lot of it was, no, come on, come on, let's go. Come on, no, <laughs> you know? So at, you know, 6.30 in the morning when I'm like walking, I'm like out in my pajamas walking the entire driveway, which is like a quarter mile loop. I get up, that's what my husband's job usually is in the morning, but he's out of town, so uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah, right, Nancy, exactly. So, um. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I've cut down on the back pocket flaps is all. Um, I already have them cut out. I'll just save them for another project. Maybe, 
maybe it'll be that. I will say I had one job. My husband has you ha said you have one job. I love how this was my one job, and it was to teach Noodle, the, the stray cat. And that's what we're calling him, Noodle, now. I mean, I feel, feel like that's set. set. Um, teach him how to use the cat flap. And I did, by the way, within 36 hours of him leaving. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, Michelle. There's nothing. There's no shame in that. Hi, Derry. So, um, so yeah, that is kind of funny because at least I'm not getting up at 3 a.m. to let him out or in or anything. I do worry about him, but he's going out either way. Like, there's he he doesn't have a litter box in the house, so he has to go out. Um, I have I do I don't want to get into this whole thing, but like my, my cat stuff is a little complicated right now. So. Oh, nice. Love Notions Cadence. That's a, a top, right? And the Made by Ray Trillium. I like her patterns. They're really cute, but I know just by looking at them, they are not going to fit me. Because boobs. You know? Like, there was the washi dress. I love that thing. It's so adorable. I, I love it. But I saw it, and I was like, I will look eight months along in that, and I just didn't do it. And I have a lot of friends. I feel like some of those patterns, they seep into the world of people who are dabbling in sewing, and they, they don't have the time to keep up with the whole home sewing world. They're, they've, they have their own other hobbies and work and everything, right? So the things that are really popular and spill into their world, they're like, okay, well, if I'm hearing about this, it must be really big, it must be good, it must be a good pattern. And um, it's probably easy. Um, there's a lot of like good reasons for that, right? And, and it's really cute pattern. So, but then I had a lot of friends make that and they were me messaging me, Sammy, me my fabric, it's just like, I look pregnant in this, you know? And I'm like, like I think that that dress is really cute and like, like rayon, something really drapey. And most of my friends that were dabbling in sewing have quilting cotton because that's all they have access to. They're not like, it's so, so much work, right? We all know how much work it is to find good quality or just, just garment fabrics, garment specific fabrics, let alone the quality part of it, right? And so they get to go into the quilting cotton store, the, the fabric store. They don't know, they don't know maybe that there's not like a garment fabric store and a quilting store. They just think, say, fabric store and they go there, you know? And so then they buy fabric because it's awesome. It's all beautiful, gorgeous, fun, cute, cute prints. And then you're like, what, I can't make clothes out of this? So yeah, yeah, anyway. <laughs> okay, Terry, I want some casserole. Oh, the um, cadences? Oh, that's interesting. Her name is Jenny, by the way. I used to call her Joe Hausler too, but her name's Jenny. <laughs> Jenny O. <laughs> I think she gets that, that a lot because she's had to correct me and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Yeah, right, Amy? Yeah, and these are people, some of them might not even quilt or maybe they've dabbled in that too. But, you know, if you don't know anything, like say you're like, I want to learn about, I don't know, I can't come up with an example right now. <laughs> a little fried. But <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you're like, the sewing thing's kind of appealing. Oh, I know that fabric store. I pass by it every day. It looks so cute. I'm going to stop in. Fabric store. Generic, right? Then you go in, you're like, oh my gosh, what have I been missing out on? Look at all this cute stuff. You buy all this fabric. You have no idea how much to buy, what you want, what you're doing. You buy, you ask them, how much would I need for a dress? And they'd probably say, I don't know, maybe three yards. You get three yards, you get home. You make a dress and you're like, this doesn't feel like any dress I've ever, <laughs> I've ever worn. <laughs> so... Trillium is Jenny's. Yes, it absolutely is. That's why I was like, wait, the cadence? I forgot what the other one was. <laughs> oh my gosh, Shem. I have gone on the label site and designed so many little labels and then I just don't buy them. Just shopping online for fabric is hard. Yeah. Yeah, we did that Zoom in the guild on how to shop for fabric online successfully. And I feel like we covered a lot. Like it was... Dense. I even made a packet for it. And I still felt at the end of it like, I forgot about this, I forgot about this, I forgot about this. 
you know. We could do a part two. We should do a part two. We should do a part two because it, people probably had a time to digest that a little bit. I don't know when I'd feel that, fit that in. Not this month, that's for sure. Maybe next month. Maybe someday. I don't know, you guys. <laughs> okay, let's get going. So, um... The pattern instructions have you start out with the fronts, which is fine. I personally, when I sew pants, I start with the backs and my rationale. Um, yeah, that's what, okay, it's a slightly A-line sheath dress. Okay, I have it mixed up with something else. I'm picturing something else by Love Notions. And, and, I, and uh, the Trillium for sure is one of Jenny's favorites. That's awesome. Um, you know she's in the guild. I see her there occasionally, but it, she's not posting anything. Um, what was I about to say? I'm a little tired, even though I'm getting sleep. Um, oh, 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 I know what I was going to say. Um, so I like to start with the backs. I, I admit, like, if I were sewing these by myself, I'd probably dive into the fronts because I look at the fly and I'm like, Give it to me. I love juicy sewing details and things like that with moving parts, you know? So, um, <clears throat> oh, I had no idea that was the same dress. Are you serious, Anna? Well, that's awesome. I did not know that. Oh, that's so funny. So here I am talking about that particular dress. Well, that dress looks really cute on her. Well, then just disregard everything I say about it. In sewing back patch pocket, how do you decide if you're doing a design or not? It's what keeps you from doing. Oh, I'm going to talk about that. Uh, it could, Margie. I've seen a lot of the fabric suppliers because I'm still on some of the vendor mailing list. Um, and they've already mentioned it. The price of a cotton, especially, I think has gone up. So yeah. And freight, 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 <clears throat> the fr freight expenses, which I, I don't know this very intimately. I know this through my husband where he works and they have, um, they have to deal with freight a lot. So something happened environmentally where I think, this, I don't know anything about this, so please don't get mad at me if I'm telling you this wrong. So the price of a container, you know, those, those containers you see on a train car traveling across the country, the ones that can't come in in boats at docks, and then, you know, sometimes there's, you know, stuff at the docks that also um, kind of holds things up. But that price of that container, it went up something like from, I think, $6,000 to $30,000, like that kind of a difference. Um, from China and places like that to America. And the reason, part of the reason why it went up was some of the environmental, some of the envir environmental regulations that were written went on the books during the time of the great Panini. And a lot of those companies that were doing freighting weren't in compliance. So there were fewer people to freight things, let alone the greater um, demand for stuff. So that's partly what happened. I don't know what intimately, so please don't get mad at me, <laughs> but um, that is part of the problem. So freighting anything has added a lot because there's fewer places to freight stuff. So that is, um, and containers are going back empty. What is it? Wait. Yeah. So if containers are going back empty, that's not a very a fair and balanced trade situation. And so then prices will reflect that as well because now the container doesn't get to make money going both directions. It's only making money going one direction. So they have to pay for the return trip on the, on the trip that was going here in the first place. So there you go. There's my international trade <laughs> TED talk. So <laughs> anyway, getting back to these pants. Um, I should probably wait a second because it'll take like 10 seconds for you guys to hear all that and then start commenting and then I'll have to interrupt myself again. <laughs> anyway, um, as far as that shim, you know, I was thinking about doing a design on my back pockets and then I was like, well, I have flaps. So the flaps could cover it up in some ways. But 
I often don't always do a design. Sometimes I'm just in a hurry. And I have stuff out today. I was thinking of doing a design. This is actually a clear piece of paper. It's vellum. I was thinking maybe I will do a little design on them. I don't know, because the backs, there's not a whole lot. It won't take me that long. So I thought it would be kind of fun. But um, yeah, that is, I guess, you know, you could just have make pocket designs and keep a binder. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Nancy. <laughs> That'll be $10.99. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so. Yeah, I right, Anna, I know. Hello, Brinja, how's it going? Nice to see you. <laughs> yep, I totally agree, Anna. I can, get, I can actually talk so much about that kind of thing. We're, we're not Michelle, and there's uh, reasons for that, but um, I'm, not, I'm not quite up on that. I think part of it's, um, uh, yeah, I think part, yeah, there's some reasons for that. I don't really know, honestly. I can't remember them all. But I could talk a lot about th things kind of affecting the everyday person relating to manufacturing in our country. It's one of my, my passions and why I didn't sell my company Chicken Boots because my chick company Chicken Boots was doing amazing when I closed it. It was doing amazing. I was making a profit manufacturing something in America and that is extremely rare. Um, and uh, the only advice I would ever get is you need to export production so you can increase your profit margin. But if I needed, if I wanted to export my production, I would have had to sell more. To sell more, I would have had to lower the price. So it's, it's uh, this whole wacky system, right? And so there's very few places to manufacture things in our country. And because we ourselves are very focused on things being very affordable or cheap, and we don't buy things made here 100%, right? It's kind of hard to find things made here. They're very expensive or maybe we have to replace something really often so it's not very economical, then you have um, this weird thing where we're buying, buying, buying things that are made somewhere else, not here, and then you have people that don't have those like entry-level manufacturing jobs, you don't have the manufacturing here, and then you have, you're shipping the containers and then there's a panini and blah, blah, blah. So anyway. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's right, Jim. Yes, exactly. They, yeah, exactly. Brinja said it perfectly. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's sew. Okay, so usually I start with the backs of pants. And the reason I do that, uh, especially when I'm sewing with other people or publicly or in any kind of small educational thing, is I feel like it's much easier to start with the backs, except for Shem's reasoning about deciding on your patch pocket design. DMAC! <laughs> Chicken boots. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going, DMAC? Um, and so I think that it's a really great opportunity if you start on the backs to get your thread tension right, if you're doing any top stitching thread. Um, you can kind of start just like settling into the project, it's less scary. And I think a lot of people have a little bit of apprehension when they're going to that zipper fly. So sewing the backs gives you that opportunity to be kind of like get a little bit into it and then um, be excited about doing the fronts, right? So anyway, Alex, okay, I will try to remember that. I'm sorry, Alex. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna start with the backs today as well. It also gets few, like some of your pieces like quickly put together and kind of easier to handle and put back in your bin and then you have fewer things to manage for the whole project, right? So that's another reason I like to do it. It just kind of gets rid of some of the pieces really quickly. So, all right, so here's my back pockets. I decided not to put flaps on them. So now I can have a little design. This is a really, a really big hem. Is it really that big? 
So I put my interfacing on all my pieces and stuff too. I also put my instructions two pages per page on each page. So they look really tiny to you, I'm sure. This way I also won't get accused of giving them away if you see them, you know? Okay. I'm just kind of looking at that hem allowance on the back pockets. Is it really? Do you do it flat? Oh, you do. Okay, okay. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Hi, Elena. How's it going? <laughs> I've taught you too well. You do like doing the fronts. See, I like doing the fronts too. I love seeing it come together. Exactly. And the bags are kind of easy, right? <laughs> I know, but at the same time, it's like, there's a lot of people who are really nervous about sewing really thick fabric if they're doing denim or something like that, um, or top stitching or whatever. And I feel like if you start with the backs, you don't feel like you're messing something up, like a focal point like that, that crotch area, you know? So I think it says one half inch seam allowance. I wanna know the hem allowance. Am I, can I, yeah, I am doing whatever I want. All right, I'm gonna go to the serger. I'm gonna iron these up. Nice, Elena. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> I'm so paranoid that I'm gonna put the stream ending screen on again. Who, me? I'd never do that. Uh-oh, iron's not on. So when I'm doing a design on the back pockets, I like to take the top hem into consideration because if the stitch line of the hem is way down here, do I want my design to stay down here? And for this pair, you know, there would have been a flap up here and snaps. <clears throat> so you might not want your design to go into the hem, you know? Let's see. What kind of design do I want on the back? Remember when I did the quail? You know, I remember when I did the quail and then I was like, what are those on? Like I never wear a pair of pants with quail on the butt. What happened to those? Well, I ran across them the other day. They were my um, fit sample for the Peaks and Valley pants and I made shorts. Maybe I'll do quail. That would be perfect for gardening pants. We have a lot of quail. Look at how much you guys have warped me. I'm like pre-ironing my pocket hem. Sheesh, who is this person? Okay, I always like to check to see if it's symmetrical now. You know, might as well check now. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> oh, the other reason I'm pre-ironing is I'm gonna do a top stitch thread and I think doing it, um, the hem from the right side is a good idea, you know? That's great, Elena. <clears throat> oh, Shim's got that, he's doing the, doing the interface and it's awesome. I have a, a, actually a funny, I, I don't know if DMAC's still here, but, or Violet Sun's still here, but we were playing a video game last night. I love calling it video game because it makes me sound like I'm ancient. Um, we were playing Fortnite together. He, he carries me, he does, he does, I carry all the like healing and then he does all the fighting. Although I did have a really good first game. Um, and we were playing with one of his friends and I had never played with her before. She was really awesome. And we were gliding into the map and, and she wanted to land at this area where there's a roller coaster and, I, and it's, it's really cool. And I, and I said, I said, okay, do you see the big bear head? This isn't gonna make any sense to a lot of you, but you're gonna understand what I'm saying in a second. I was like, do you see the big bear head? Okay, so as you're, you want to land inside of his left 
ear as if you are the bear. So his left ear. And she was like, oh my God, those were the best instructions I've ever heard. And I was like, yeah, it's because I, I teach sewing. <laughs> See how sewing helps my Fortnite game? <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, I need some scrap fabric. How come lately I have no scrap fabric over here? All right, so I'm gonna do a pink upper thread. Oh, that's a hot mess. And uh, this will probably take me a second to get my tension right because it's gonna be, look how bad that is. You see my pink stitches showing on the other side. So partly I have to, I need two bobbins like Barbara does. I need to tighten my bottom tension. So I'm gonna, I take my thumbnail in here and I turn my little screw like, like not even a quarter turn. You don't have to change your bobbin very much to make a big impact. So that's gonna pull the top threads down to the bottom a little bit. And now um, I'm also going to tighten up the top thread so that they stay up on top a little bit. And for the industrial machine, it's this little disc is the tension disc, even though there are two. It's the little tiny one that doesn't look like it's gonna make much of an impact. That is the key one. But my, I, I, really, uh, I really hate that I have to adjust this, you know, so stinking much, you know? Because I, I do both, by the way, because this one regulates how much thread. Oh, what does that one do? I explain it really, I explain it somewhat well in my um, book, my book, <laughs> in my video about, you know, using and maintaining industrial machine. All right, I'm going to tighten this up just a little bit more. So now I'll be at a quarter of a turn total since I started. Oh, this is really bad. I hate tightening it this much, you know? Can I move the camera a bit? What would you like? I don't know why, but I can't get this to come forward right now. Do you want it to go down? What would you like? <clears throat> oh, I couldn't see. I was holding it right here. It's, it's this one right here, the top one. It's a little tiny one. It's this big. Whereas this one down here, there's bigger tension discs. Well, Terry, one of these days I'll hold your hand. Can you please pull forward? Thank you. I don't want to pull this whole thing down. Which one's just where you're pointing to? Yeah, so the top one is the thread tension, but I do both. And I'm having a lot of trouble with it. You know, I'm gonna loosen my bobbin tension. No, I'm not writing a book. <laughs> God. I would love to, however, I just, I don't know why I just said I needed to tighten up my bobbin. I need to loosen up my bobbin, not tighten it up. I would love to write a book, I think, now that I've been doing all the skill building sessions, because I feel like, okay, I can actually wrap my head around this, but yeah. Time turner. I actually, I have a time turner right here, Anna. Look. Oh, you can't see it. Let's see. This is my my cheap one. I have I have one, and it's always on my machine <laughs> because I need it. I need it so bad. <laughs> I'm gonna do four layers. And I'm gonna lengthen my stitch. I'm just gonna do a little bit of sewing so I can get it to kind of, it just doesn't look very good. It looks really terrible. Ugh. This one here, and look how wiggly the stitches are. I always find canvas stitches always look really wiggly. I 
need more fabric. Ooh. No, the denim is uh, nine ounces. Oh, that's smart, Terry. Yeah, I, I Barbara does that. I think that's so smart. Okay, we're getting there. I can see my bobbin. See, now my bobbin is, this is the row right here. Oh, you can't see that at all. See it right there? But you can see my bobbin stitches. I, I will sometimes do a few passes before I adjust it again to just hopefully it'll settle in. That's what it took. That's a good idea. Maybe I should change my needle. All right, now we're going to tighten the bobbin. Now I've got that, I've got that top thread not going underneath. One more. This always ruins my thumbnail when I do that, but my, um, my, my screwdriver just isn't really that small, isn't small enough. Okay, we're getting really close now. Libby, how's it going? So now this is really tight. Ooh, that's getting there. How's it going? It's, it's like nothing's ha nothing's changing now. Yeah, I think um, pressure foot pressure. That's a good point. I rarely change mine because I, you know, <laughs> I really like it tight. Okay, okay. Yeah, see it kind of breaks in a little bit, like after you do a few. <clears throat> it's feeling, I don't know, you know what I'm also gonna do? I'm gonna pull my bobbin out and put it back in and clean it a little bit too. I just blew it out the other day though. The other thing is the thread in the bobbin is, it's okay. It's not, not my favorite thread. It's just a, a brand I used to use at Chicken Boots. Okay, that's looking pretty good. That's it, okay. All right, no bobbin stitches. There we go. Let's do this. <clears throat> it's kind of cool. Maybe uh, that would be a nice pocket design, you know. 
<laughs> All right, we do. We need a quail. Oh, I should have done this off camera. I should have done this off camera just because the um, stitching is so noisy. You know what I mean? Like the um, presser foot, that noise. Okay, I'm getting it a little bit. I can see my thread back here. Now, this is three layers. That was only two. Don't you be acting up on me. Oh, like, like lift it up. Um, I, I do, I don't do it like that, but I do kind of go like this and this is going to look like some like magic voodoo type of thing that I, doesn't explain anything, but I just pull on the thread a little bit like this and I feel it. And I think like when you're doing it, you kind of can tell you're like, oh, that kind of feels tight or that kind of feels loose just logically. That's why I say there, there's not really any, I'm not, I don't have any kind of like guide, you know what I mean? So, but I was taught that a really long time ago at a sewing machine place. And so I, I do that and, and I know what they mean. Like it's like you kind of can, can feel it. And sometimes I'll do that and I'm like, boy, that's tight. And I'll realize it's wrapped around the arm. I didn't notice it when I pulled it out, you know. <laughs> the, Newton, <laughs> the jeweler's loop. Oh, you know what? Let's just change the needle, Michelle. I'm going to put a 16 in. <clears throat> I should have done all this off camera. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't think it would take that long. I just changed this, but this is another thing I do. Every time I change my needle, I go like this. <clears throat> just feel it. Feel the barb that's on there. Because it is. <laughs> if you're getting a barb really quick, like, like you have hardly sewn anything and you're getting a little barb on the end of your needle, you should take it in because something's hitting your needle too often. Oh, there you go. So yeah, so you guys have a good guide. Yeah, that's that's smart. No. It's like a little rotated pointing that way rather than that way. This is okay, so you want to see the dumb thing I do? that I've done for decades that I can't break myself of the habit of, I've told you guys this before, is when I thread a needle, here's the thread right here, I go like this, I wrap it around my fingers. So look, this is how it looks. It's wrapped around, see that? It's the dumbest thing I do that I cannot break myself of because then I get it in the needle eye, I accidentally yank it out when I pull my fingers out of the loop. It's maddening. It's also sometimes hard to get it into the hole because, so then I grab it and then I pull my fingers out and then I pull it through. So don't do that. Sometimes you sew for decades and you, you just still do dumb things like that, you know? Oh, really, Elena? What do you mean? It actually screws on straight now. Okay. Ugh. Now I need to adjust it some more. Okay, it's a little easier now. All right, we're ready. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it's madness. I'm not proud of it. 
That's why I tell you guys. Um, uh, I had this cute little sketch of a, um, of a quail once. Do you guys remember that? It was so cute. I don't know. I want him, I want him plumper. <laughs> and, and maybe a little smaller. You know what um, all depictions of quail, you only ever see the, the male, you know? Oh, that's amazing, Elena. Hi, Sylvie. How's it going? Um, no, I mean, I usually do Libby's trick of finding a continuous line drawing and then printing it on vellum. Yeah, it does look like a pigeon, doesn't it? I'm gonna go like this a little bit and then put his feet here. So I'm thinking more like I don't usually do freehand, but it doesn't have to be that great. It's going to be sewn, you know? <laughs> what do you mean you've never seen a picture of a quail? Oh, do you not have quail where you live, Mafia? They're so funny. They're so cute. Okay, so let me bend this one over. If I, do, if I bend this one over, I'll just tilt it like this. So the, the boys, um, Mafio, they have this little feather that sticks up. It's, it's hilarious. Um, you know, like think angler fish, but it's a little feather. And so they always look very jaunty. <laughs> and they're a ground bird, so they're always running around. And the male is like always out front, and he's always like on a little rock. Like he'll sit there on the rock. And then all the um, females and babies... And they, they, like, multiple families hang out together. So there's usually, like, 20 or 30 of them together. <clears throat> Feet more at the back of its body. Oh, yeah, that helps. Um, and, and then there's a male at the back. There's sometimes, like, three taking care of, like, 20. And so they're like, go, 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 <laughs> you know? And then they're all like, Brrr! or they're sitting there eating. So, you know what? I'm going to pull up a picture of what I did before. Just, just give me a second. I'm pretty sure I know exactly where it is. Peaks and valleys, right? L-M-N-O-P, okay. Okay.
Can you hear me still? You can't see me, I know, but look, see the quail at the bottom? Well, that's a stupid look on my face. And then um, there's the other one. Look at those look like quail. Can you see that? <laughs> I did that with a line drawing. Now I'm feeling like mine's just not going to be that great. <laughs> it's out of the frame for you. Only oh, here, my shirt him. All right. Okay. Here we go. I can move this here. I, I wish that I could zoom in on it, but I'm just showing you on my, okay. Well, let's do it again, Michelle. Okay, so can I lift this up more? Oh my gosh, I, my mouse just doesn't work on this. I don't want to do that. Can you see it down there? There's one. I could print out a drawing. So there. The feet are at the front of the body. The tail's down low. And Yeah, it's going to be fine, you guys. <laughs> hey, Malin, how's it going? All right. Um, oh, my gosh. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the tail I have all wrong. I knew I should get a second piece of paper. You know? I want you chonky. <laughs> Exactly. Don't you dare do that machine. Let me see if I have my pictures. Let's see. Do I, by any chance, have the quail I printed out before? No. Let's search. Let's search. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, no, that's not, that's not what I need. Top stitching, maybe top stitching. Mm. 
No. Oh well. It's called a, it's called a top knot. See, I feel like I did this in um, Procreate, you know, and then I printed it on the vellum. <clears throat> so just a second. Oh, I like, I like this one here. Okay. Just a second. <laughs> let me get, let me print this out. I have all this vellum from taking that quilting class. I don't know why I bought a box of a hundred pages, but it's been really, you know, handy for this. I just feel like it's kind of wasteful. I can't see chat right now. Sorry if you're yelling at me. I'm sorry. Just a second. I have about 10 screens open. Okay, so I'm gonna print this out, but I gotta get the scaling right, you know? Uh, four by six. Four by six. We'll try that. <laughs> nice, Michelle. <laughs> Are you printing or not? Why aren't you printing? Oh, that's right, this weird, this thing I have to always say, tell to do twice, and then it does it once. Okay. Should I just do two like that guy? Let's see how it is. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Let's do this. Where is my chat? <laughs> okay. All the quail critiques out there. L M G T F what? Oh, is that let me Google that for you? <laughs> um Draw another one. Okay, so this is actually continuous line drawing. I just lost the thread of how it goes though. All right, so now we have a backup. All right. my pocket top stitching. I actually recorded a video about this. Still haven't edited it. <laughs> Let's put him like right here. This whale is not as chonky. He's kind of chonky. Kind of chonky. We like chonky quail and we cannot lie.
Oh, actually, I want that. So sometimes I think it's good to draw a line like on your on your fabric because it's really easy to kind of lose what will look like it's going straight, you know, like if it's walking or something like that. So it's best to do a line now than trying to do some sort of compensating stitching later, you know what I mean? All right, so I'm gonna start there or right here. I'm gonna start down here. And so I'm gonna make a long tail so that I can hand tie it and there won't be a back stitch. But you know what? My tension isn't gonna be great because it's one layer. Oh yeah, that's really bad. So let's put some interfacing back there. Can we drag this out any longer? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my, my, my necklace keeps smacking you guys around. Sorry. I like this stuff, you know, but it's kind of narrow. So let's give myself a little bit, a little line to line it up on the back side like this. Doesn't even matter. Let's get rid of this. Is this what you're talking about, Shem? <laughs> Trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> Here, we'll just line it up with that line I drew. I can see my little chalk line there. I don't have any tear away. Right? It could be. Could become a, a machine tension SPS. I, I don't think I'm the best for that since uh, I don't use the home sewing machine, but I could always break that thing out someday. The confidence in changing your ten tension, you know? Let's line this one up. So I like to iron my interfacing from the um, top side. So how could I figure out this is straight? By, without having a ruler. I have so many little tricks like that, you know. Make sure it's sticky side up. What happened there? Oh, did I touch it or something? Let's get it on there before it does anymore. All right. Chonky quail, here we come. Maybe I'll do something simpler for the other pocket so we don't have to endure this for so long, you know? Okay. Let's see if I can follow the continuous line. So I've got, uh, do I have a long tail. We were, we were discussing my, my tension though. That's right. That's why I just did that. Let's see. Let's see how it, how, um, oof. Oh, 
are you selling so badly now? Well, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay. Oh, I just use it to draw for the um, drawing. <laughs> I, I, it's um, there's probably other things for people who do a lot of stitching and embroidery. There is specific papers and things, and probably Shem can talk a little bit about that. It sounds like he has an embroidery machine. A few other people do too. I'm just using it for the the drawing. You know, it's printable, which I really like, and. I can just, I don't have to transfer the design onto my fabric. I have a hair in my mouth, there we go. So that's, that's why. That's why I use it. So the start of the design was like right here near the foot, right there. So that's where I'm at. And then supposedly I can do this all in one line, you know. You might want shorter stitches though. And I think like some of this will get a little bit muddied. You know, this wasn't intended for sewing, <laughs> right? I have my hand on the length dial. This is why I don't like doing this on camera because of all the, my presser foot's so loud. I hate that about this machine. So I'm gonna go one stitch. I'm gonna go back one here and then forward instead of turning the machine around. hard to make a curve, right? When you're doing a curve that's smaller than the width of your stitch. So you just gotta let it go, unless you're gonna do a really tiny stitch length. And then if you have to take anything out, it's gonna be a little hard. My biggest challenge when I did the video about doing it this way was the fact that it takes so long to watch someone do this. And I wanted the video to be one minute long. So. <clears throat> While this makes it a little faster, it's a little a little tedious. Certainly not an enjoyable ASMR, right? <laughs> you know what I found might be a good ASMR video is, is watching me sew, or anyone sew, mulch mats. <laughs> I was editing a video um, and I was watching me sew it and I was like, well, this is kind of relaxing. My stitch length right now is at the notch just past two. Um, it's it's a little bit long, but the thing is my thread's so thick, if it gets any shorter, I don't think it'll be quite right. You know what I mean? All right, so we're gonna come down to the breast and then down to the belly and tail. So I kind of lost that there, so I'm just gonna go straight up instead of trying to round it. Also, these kinds of long swooping areas, try not to stop. It'll keep it smoother. So now we're at the face. It was really smart I started at the foot because this is a little tight. Sorry. Now you know why I never do this on camera. I'm probably driving my neighbors crazy. I usually do this when they're not here on Friday afternoons. Last few. All right, don't backstitch. Pull your long tail. All right, and so now we're gonna flip it over and we're just gonna tug on our tail a little bit like this, right? And see now my top thread pulls to the back. 
I know I demonstrate this all the time, but I think this is a really good technique. Like, say you're stitching, oh, let's see, look at this is a problem. This can happen where your bobbin gets kind of caught up in all the stitching because it's not like you're down there controlling it, you know? So one thing you could probably do to prevent this is pull your bobbin up through the top, and then that way you can at least hold on to it while you start and get going, so. But yeah, if you have like, say you're doing some fancy top stitching anywhere on your garment that is very prominent and you need to repair something. I had to do that on um, a video I, I recorded for someone and <clears throat> they saw me correct it in the video. I knew they would edit it out and I just said, oh, just a second, let me fix this so it looks right because I had, I, it, I don't remember why, but, and I can make it look seamless like the top stitching was always fine. Oh, I bet they can, Michelle. Like that kind of thing, like repetitive, like funk, 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 funk. <laughs> I'm sure that they are eventually you are going to be like, what is that? <laughs> They're not right next door to me, though. There's no one there right now. She's only here like Sundays now or like every other Sunday. All right. So I'm just trying to get a long enough tail because this is this is the end right here that I'm going to trim this right here and try and get this over here now. Right. Without breaking it. Maybe I won't be able to. It's kind of a bummer. It'll go this way, but not the other way. There we go. Okay, now we can pull this thread to the back and then we can just hand tie it. So all my po pants pockets, fly stitching, those are all hand tied on my garments. And then sometimes I will tuck this thread, like I'll leave the tail and tuck it in somewhere else um, or just cut it close, you know. So then this, and then you don't have any back stitches on the top, but I have used the back stitch to like make an eyeball, you know. And then now we can just take this paper off. And so I hold the paper close to the stitching. You don't want to stretch out your stitching. So this is where I'm saying like there might be better papers out there that are suited for this kind of thing. But it is nice that I can put this in my printer and then I can do whatever I want. I certainly wouldn't want to do this for a living, you know? I don't have one of those cool hooky things, but the all, of course, <laughs> is my multi-purpose tool. And so sometimes when I get in these really tight spots, I take my all and I run it like this along the side, each side of the stitching. So, then I'm just kind of basically breaking the paper next to the stitching and it kind of perforates it and makes it a little easier to remove. You can kind of just pre-do it. I, I, I would like to say that the laundry will take out all the little bits, but I found a little bit on my Dawn jeans that when I repaired them recently, <laughs> I found paper in it. I was like, what is that little gray thing? And it was a piece of paper with pencil lead on it still. <laughs> It's kind of funny. So yeah, you might ha need the right tool or tweezers to get a lot of it if you're doing a really dense design. I would pr do one of these first um, before you do something really ambitious just to know what it's like. Because this part can be the worst part, honestly. <laughs> oh, and see like that got kind of caught my stitches so I wanted to hold the stitches. I put my finger on top of the stitches and pull the paper away. I don't want to stretch out my stitches. Oh, interesting. Well, you can't, but the wash away interfacing, is that to write your design on? Like, I don't really want my interfacing on the back to wash away. Or do I? Do I? You guys are all the ex experts on that kind of thing, I think. Look at this. We haven't even started sewing the pants yet. Sorry if you're here for a tutorial. Just fast forward <laughs> when I'm not live. <laughs> oh, okay. Are you t we print it. You oh, yeah, and then you just trace it onto the tearaway. That's smart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, and, and embroiderers, Anna. Quilters don't do a whole lot of um, embroidery. Like, 
Some of them do, but it's not like their focus. But this paper is from a quilting class I took because you printed the, um, it was a foundation paper piecing, I think, was what it was called. Sorry, I don't remember. Um, and then um, you printed the design on the vellum and then you sewed your, and so it had a window so you could see the center one that you were lining up your little critter, you know, or whatever. It's actually for the quilt on my chair back there because I don't let that go home. <laughs> I probably should though. I have a different one that's kind of cool and I ha that I haven't even put anywhere. All right, so we're getting there. Is it chonky enough? I don't know. But you know, this is what everyone's gonna comment on when you post your picture, right? You're like, but wait, the pants. <laughs> oh yeah, because you can drop the feed dogs. I don't think you can really use a free motion quilter, quilting machine for this. I think it would be a little bit, um, like a quilting, free motion quilting machine would be a little overkill. And also I don't think you could hold a small piece. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Like on, on a on a domestic machine, like a like a small home machine, yeah. Yeah, you can drop your feed dogs and stitch in place. Or or it doesn't really drop your feed dogs because you still need that, but you can kind of pull it around. All right. I can work on the details later. Do I have to do it again? <laughs> Let's give him a little path to sit on though. I can kind of see my um, interfacing there. Sorry, oh my gosh, just stay down. Like that. Give him a little context. What we need is like the California poppy right here. <laughs> yes, I'm California's fan, biggest fan. That's me. Oh, see, see how that little stitch right there is a little bit loopy. So when that happens, let's see if I can get this without stretching those out. So when that happens like that, I go to the back side. I kind of keep track and I use my awl and I just shove it in the loops like this. Just a few around that stitch to kind of pull it to the back and get rid of the loop. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Anna. All right. What, what can I do on this side that's fast? I could just do maybe a, um, an outline. Oh my gosh, he looks like he has, he looks human. He looked human there for a second. How about that? I seen an eraser really quick. Yeah, right, a poppy.
<laughs> I just accidentally erased his beak. Bird footprints. Oh, footprints, some sort of plant. Quail footprints. We could do that, like just kind of like, like this. Is that what you guys are thinking? This seems like actually a lot of work. Okay, so here's the deal with the footprints. It's a lot of hand tying. Like that. I don't want them huge. My chocolate liner won't draw for me right now. What does a quail footprint look like? It's the middle toe that's longer. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right? Oh my God, I can't draw a quail footprint. <laughs> I am not the first to Google this. Oh my gosh, there is a complicated. Oh my gosh, look at all these cute little bird footprints. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. So a California quail looks like this. Like that. It's more, more spread out. Like that. Yeah, tie, well, that's tying. Unless I, yeah, I don't know. Hmm, 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 hmm. Just one gigantic footprint on my butt. <laughs> Okay, just a second. <laughs> I still have, okay, I already have a piece of paper in there. We're going for poppies. <laughs> well, I've been streaming for over an hour and we haven't started sewing. Just a big head, like the quail is really close up. That's promising. Why didn't I think of doing this early? Usually I, I think about this kind of thing, you know? Stop, stop it. Oh my gosh. Okay, 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 okay. <clears throat> Home stretch.
感。Oh, it cut it off. Oh, it printed it in landscape, so it kind of cut it off. I'm going poppy. I kind of, see this is why I think it's wasteful. It's like, cause I, if I do it in Procreate, I can kind of like group them, you know? Could I do it kind of like that it's that it's um laying like this? You know? I think that's what I'll do. Alright, I'm going for it. A I was the first thing that popped in my head was a rock, Nancy. All right, this time I'm gonna pull a longer tail and pull to the top. I haven't pulled my thread up through the top in, in years. Okay, so now I'm going to start. I'm not quite on my interfacing. California poppy leaves are quite frilly. They're very detailed. They kind of remind me of marigold leaves. I planted a poppy once in my garden, like one from the nursery I bought, which was kind of funny to buy from the nursery. It's California State flower. And it's protected. You, you can't pick them or anything on the side of the road. So I've planted this poppy in my garden. And the following year, I had about 5,000 of them. <laughs> you know, so. They spread. They, they left my garden, the, the garden was sitting like above, um, the planter was sitting against some rock and they spread to all the rock area because they really like that kind of environment. Shallow roots. It's called the golden poppy, but <laughs> I just did it in coral pink. <laughs> Fee you. I almost used my pencil to do that. I'm gonna tie all our tails together. I would have been tying a, a two tails per foot if I did the footprints, you know? You gotta think ahead. <laughs> if you could connect them, then maybe that would, that would work, you know, but I didn't wanna figure that out. Okay. Maybe I could just remove this paper later. Okay, all right, let's sew, let's sew, let's sew, let's sew. Yeah, it was really pretty. It was really funny because it was like, okay, well, I always wanted a lot of poppies. That's not where I wanted them. And they just took over my gravel, which was a huge gravel thing. Um, but, uh, you know, they looked really, really colorful. The seed head of the poppy. The California poppy seed head isn't the same as like an oriental poppy though. 
Yeah, they, they, I mean, it wasn't really 5,000, Michelle, but trust me, there were, there were hundreds. Um, there, I don't know if I would call it a weed, but they definitely like to volunteer, you know? All right. I um, interfaced my pocket flaps together. I'm not doing back pocket flaps. These are the sides. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Let's put these on. <laughs> All right, I got my markings. So let's do the dart first. I'm gonna do the dart in my top stitch thread because um, it's such a small amount, you know? I need my marking on the back here. I'm gonna top stitch the dart just for some added top stitching goodness, you know? Why not? Plus I think it'll help reinforce it because I'm using questionable tension. You know, I feel like it's not very consistent, so. I still am gonna hand time a dart though. I always do. It's a, exactly, it's a wildflower. I meant to say that, thanks Libby. It's a wildflower and yeah, it just spreads pretty easily. My friend laughed when she said, when, I, when she saw that I, I bought one from the store, she was like, you bought one? <laughs> like that's how <laughs> easy they are to grow sometimes and how volunteer in nature they are. I'm gonna backstitch this because it's gonna be under my pocket. I'm not too worried about that. And then, all right, which cheek gets which? Do we want, meow. Do we want the poppy over here? I think I like kind of like them facing away from each other like that. What do you think? <clears throat> Yeah, top stitch the dart. You, you ever do that? In some places, it looks kind of cool. Do they germinate in someone else's eyes? <laughs> maybe, maybe looking at the center actually does look pretty good. What do we think here? feels like I should have sewed these in like a warm orange because of the poppy. I'll sew the other dart while you guys weigh in. Oh, that's neat, Nancy. I was thinking about that the other day that I could stand to have some more wildflowers in my yard because there's just like plenty of opportunity for them. And I was like, you know, I bet I could do that, especially along the road. <laughs> Nancy always has a way with words. Okay, so I think Michelle <clears throat> and Shem are saying the same thing. All right, quail facing the poppy, poppy on the left. All right, that's three of you. Purple coneflower that sells seed in the goldfish. Oh, yeah, echinacea. Gosh, I've tried so many times to grow echinacea. So I actually have some right now that I planted last year. And now this year they really, they like, they look really good. So I'm really hoping that this is the year they bloom. Cause they didn't last year. They were really too small, you know? All right, so let's line up this pocket up here. 
I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm really hoping that those notches are for the pocket, not the flap. You would normally, you know, put your pocket on first. So let's turn this under the half inch. Let's get a little straighter. Getting into the thick stuff. All right, I'm gonna turn down the little corner of my pocket turn back. So, you know, this little part, so this is the side of my pocket right here, right? And when you turn back the, the pocket, see there's my notch, you can see those little, those little raw edges. I'm gonna turn that in down inside, like fold it. I'll show you better on the other side and then close it like that. I think my triangle is a little bit of, of a soft triangle. Yeah, <laughs> it did turn out kind of soft. I got a little off track there. Tuck in those corners there. Don't mind the presser foot noise? Okay. I was going to try and uh, not baste these together, but pin them together today and do like a little fitting. And that my little video I usually do, you know, when I do fit pants or something. <clears throat> I just ran out of time though. I was getting stuff ready too, so I don't know if I feel like I was kind of unprepared because I, I don't know, maybe because I forgot I was going to do this. The top stitching. Okay, so see this little turn back corner here? <clears throat> I'm going to zoom it in and make it a little brighter for you. I've been waiting to brighten it up once we got the denim on the screen. So this little corner right here of the turn back, I usually fold that down. See that? It can make it kind of thick though. So if your machine doesn't, you know, play nice with the thicknesses, be careful. But at least this way you won't have that edge creeping out at the top and then unraveling, you know. It looks nicer. There we go. <clears throat> Let's do the other one. I mean, we're almost done with the backs, see? There's not much to do on the backs. Trim down all this hoo-ha here. Line it up. I always put like, I usually put like two pins. That interfacing really adds some body. So this one now. Get rid of some of these threads. So this corner here, I do this, fold it in like this. That's all. I wish manufacturers would do that. It was my pet peeve on my um, Liverpool, is that what they were called? Liverpool jeans? Liverpool? Yeah, right? The really nice, um, they used to be really nice stretch and pull on jeans. I 
and they, um, you know, I'd spend seventy dollars on a pair of jeans once every two years, <clears throat> but the uh, threads would poke out the back pockets, and they just looked so cheap, you know. Didn't get inter uh, ironed very well there, but that'll be okay. It'll get ironed again at some point. These pockets look so long and narrow. I have these two lines. What do we think about that? This and this, you know? Maybe it breaks it up a little bit. I don't know. All right. So let's sew our center back seam. And I'm gonna do the serger as well. I already did sort out my tension there. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> hey Missy, how's it going? Welcome, you missed the long saga of top stitching my back pocket so you haven't missed hardly any construction on these pants. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna overlock these together first. I don't know why, but I almost just pissed pressed end stream. <laughs> it's that the button thing, you know, it's like, don't push that button. Don't push the button. Then I just want to push it. I don't know, maybe flat fell would be better on the back. Hmm. No, I'm gonna overlock it. I don't know why, but I had it in my head that I would overlock this pair of pants. I, I think mainly because these aren't technically jeans. You know, they're not, they're not sold as a pair of jeans. I'm using denim to make them. Ugh. I unplugged it while I was sewing. Oh, that's true. It kind of does. So I'm going to switch. Am I going to switch? I'm going to switch. Am I going to switch? <laughs> I'm going to check my seam. So my, my seam, I have the serger stitch on my machine so that I have a seam there. But I didn't use the full seam allowance because I planned on putting another seam next to this. But I don't want to use this with the top stitching thread. I'd rather just use blue and blue, but then I have to adjust all my, my, um, my uh, tension again. So part of me wants to just hop stitch it using the serger stitching. I think I will. All right, I would press my center back seam to the right, but as if you're wearing the pants, so the same thing. And that becomes important later when you're doing the front fly. Because if you press this seam to the right, and then when you're doing your fronts, you press the, that seam to the right, which is actually the wearer's left you will be able to offset them at the juncture of the crotch. There we go. It's all zoomed in, sorry. We'll pull out some of this, more of this paper. 
just chip away at it, right? It's so satisfying, but it's also kind of tedious. Okay, the backs are kind of done. So let's look at the front pockets. We have the side pockets, which have flaps. And we have a lot of pattern pieces. Here we go. We have, I have knee pockets to hold a knee pad. The screen is frozen. Not for me. Is it? Maybe I was sitting still. <laughs> you know, like that. <laughs> I sometimes when I'm editing a video, I'm like, oh my gosh, it froze. And I'm just sitting there so still thinking like, wait, what if I did this? What if I did that? And I just sit there <laughs> fooling myself. You know? All right. Oh, you know, Emily. Um, oh, okay, cool. You said refresh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if Emily's still here, but you know our knee pad pocket? You could elasticize the top to kind of draw it in. I can't believe I didn't think about that yesterday. So let's overlock this top edge here and... Yeah, we'll just do that. We'll just overlock this top edge. We're gonna do one thing at a time. So I'm just gonna overlock. This is uh, my modification to this pattern is that I'm adding knee pockets for knee pads. I'm just going to do a flat hem at the top here. And I'm also going to put this on the inside of my pants. So they're not going to be visible from the outside. It also means I have to put my knee pads on before I put my pants on. But I think it will also make them more secure and less likely to fall out of the pocket. But you could also just put a little piece of elastic in the hem here, and I'll show you guys how to do that real quick. I don't think I'm gonna do it on mine, but I can show you what I would do if I was. I wish I would have ironed that. This will also conceal the fact that I'm using a different denim on these knee patches than I am for the rest of the pants I ran out. <laughs> so if I were doing a piece of elastic in here, I would just put it through this hem here, right? I would do something, like I wouldn't use this 3 8 on this wide of a hem or this heavy of a fabric, but if my fabric was a little lighter weight, this could work. Um, I would probably use like a half inch. I don't think 3 quarters is, you know, I think that's just too wide. So then I take the elastic and I would secure it at the end with a few stitches, right? So we'll do that. And then I would pull until I feel like, I'd probably cut your elastic the width, I mine's the gusset, so the width of how, how narrow you want your pocket to finish, right? So if we just wanna take in a little bit, like get it a little bit cinched, and then I would stitch across the bottom, and then I would just carry on sewing your pocket together. All right. So these little corners here are the gussets. And we did a whole pocket skill building session in the guild that had this as a pattern. Did I do quarter inch seam allowances here? Did I do quarter inch? I did half inch, I did half inch. Right? Yeah, 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 I did half inch. All right, and then we'll do this one here. Okay, and now I'm going to further define this space 
with a kind of a cool effect of the top stitching. So I take the corners, see how I just made this little gusset, right? You are, okay. Yeah, elastic, right, Emily? Like, that seems a little bit easier than doing flaps, right? And then you won't have the, because what if you weren't wearing your knee pads and you had those flaps and you kneel, you knelt on the flap, that would kind of hurt. If like it's the edge, you know, so. Um, so you can just put on a pocket like this. You don't have to define it, but if you want it to kind of have that kind of cool cargo-y look, right? And I showed how to draft this yesterday in the cutting stream. I fold it back. Now, if you're not doing a, like a different kind of top stitching thread, your top and bottom thread are the same. I would do it from this side because it's really easy. Look at that. You just fold it. We'll get to the corner. You pivot and you just kind of stay that width, right? Here I'm doing it a little bit blind because I have the top stitching thread. You need to back stitch up here. That is not a raw edge at the top. And we're gonna get down to the corner. Sink your needle in there, in the corner there. And now you're going to flip this one out and it's gonna pull the bottom one under. See like that? And so what I do is I kind of straighten it out at this end to kind of get it going and I pull on that end. It's a little awkward. You get to this corner and you're gonna do the same thing. And all this does is kind of give a visual definition to this pocket. <laughs> and you're trying to turn it back at the top, you know, the same, all sides. We'll use this one as a guide. Like this, all right. And remember to back stitch up here too. All right, and now you have that little, you know, an actual gusseted pocket. All right, and this is gonna hold my, my knee pad. <laughs> I hope it's gonna work. <laughs> I think it will, look at that. It's a little knee pad cradle. All right, let's prep this one now. Do our corners first. Now I'm gonna define it. You can always iron this too, then you wouldn't have to do it blind like I am, you know? <laughs> that iron man, it's so useful. There we go, that'll help me. This side looks a little wider. Okay. And then we're going to flip. I sometimes have to do like a step, a stitch or two just to kind of get it going and kind of not hung up if it gets hung up on the corner. But it surprisingly is pretty compliant. Like it, it kind of wants to just keep on going, you know? I always pull this, I'm underneath kind of pulling it, smoothing it out. And there we go, we have our cargo knee pad pockets. All right, and I still need to figure out where those are gonna go. So I'm kind of thinking when I, um, maybe now that I have the back sewn, maybe I'll pin a front to the back and hold it up on me because this is pretty specific, you know? It's tough because the out seam is usually the last thing you do but you need it done to do the waistband. Because I think having the waistband on there is really important to figuring out the knee placement. Hmm, but you don't have to worry about that if you're not doing that. All right, so here we have a flap. 
I'll use the top stitch thread to sew this together. I don't think that'll be a problem. Um, let's see, what is the seam allowance on this? Does it say something different than the usual like half inch? Half inch seam allowances. All right, yep, that looks right. This feels pretty thick. Yeah, thank you, Barbara. Good point. Yeah, because I probably would have been trying them on. I would have placed them somewhere. I would have knelt and been like, oh, that's not quite in the right thing, place. Hey, Nathmi, how's it going? All right, I'm going to trim this down. So this one, and we'll, we'll iron it. I did a different fabric for the under flap because I didn't have enough. I didn't have enough to make these. I'm definitely stash busting and scrap busting for this, which is so great for something that'll be, you know, work clothes specific. Like to have dedicated work clothes is always, for some reason it feels decadent when we really do need them because it preserves our other clothes. But I kind of learned the value of that working on a farm, you know, because you, you really do, are hard, you're really hard, you know. And um, my, I used to milk uh, animals, cows and go uh, goats. And so <laughs> my clothes started smelling like, like, you know, rancid milk or sour milk, not rancid, but sour milk. It wasn't bad, it, it didn't smell bad, but it smelled, you know, like it had a distinct smell. So, yeah, I wasn't going to use my regular clothes. There's no way on a farm you could. And here it's the same. It's like, you know, you kneel on your knees and they get all faded. Sometimes our street clothes are more comfortable. You don't want to be out there gardening in sweats, right? Even though that would be nice. I don't know. Maybe we could do some stretch woven sweats. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just press this on the inside. And I just kind of press the seam. Just it'll make it easier and crisper on the edge if I do. Hard to get in there though. This little corner does not look very good right here. Maybe it's this side. Oh, it is this end. This is the end that looked like a corner. All right, it looks better. All right. So the side pockets have to be done after the out seam is done. So I wonder if you do the inseam last on these pants. I'll have to check that out because that could be the case. It's always tricky to do cargo po side pockets, the, the side pockets on um, any kind of pant because they can interfere with any other pockets like the uh, front. Um, hand pocket bag, you know, so this one doesn't have that though. It has patch front pockets oh, That's a good idea can do and hello I like that idea I can even just pin the knee pad Yeah, because this waistband is a little different, right? Because it has the waist facing and the ribbing. It's kind of wide. Hmm. You don't really want to have to put these on after the pant leg is sewn, you know? 
<laughs> so maybe what I'll be doing is leaving the inseam till very last, because if I do that, I can put the waistband on, the side pockets on, the knee pockets on, and then the inseam can be last. I think that's the, the trick. All right, let's top stitch this flap. Is that a little too bright? Let me put this, I'll flip that over too. It'll help. Oh my God, my, my attention is, uh, I mean, you know, it's good for uh, like 20 out of 22 stitches. <laughs> this looks not crisp right here. See that one right there. All right. Let's hem this pocket. We're getting all this prep done. Feels good. Usually I like, you know, do a bunch of ironing, you know, come back and forth. Do one thing at a time here. It's kind of satisfying, isn't it? So this pocket will have snaps. And I'm kind of trying to decide, do I want to turn under this hem? Um, I think you do have a seam allowance that you turn under twice at the top of the pocket. Let's double check here. Where's the side pockets? Back, back, back. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, it's repeat for the front. So, oh yeah, so you, you there isn't a turn under hem allowance right here. So we'll, we'll overlock that. I keep, this has never happened before. I don't know why it keeps pulling out. Maybe something's in there. I do interchange my plugs with both Jukies. <laughs> I have no idea which one goes to which anymore. <laughs> I was gonna practice that serger technique Anna posted in the gill. <laughs> Quailgate debacle, I feel like that's some harsh language. Mods, can you time Shem out for a little bit? <laughs> Quailgate debacle. You and I know we've had much more quail gatey type things than pockets lately. <laughs> All right. Oh, I did not sew those even. Shem. It's all your fault. Look at that. My notch is right there. Yours does, I've never had that problem. We're gonna just take this one out. This is your punishment. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. It does need a fun name. It, I think it's more like, um, 
uh, Quail Saga. <laughs> so that is so smart, Barbara. I've, I've totally done that to make things look straighter. <laughs> right? I think I, I'm going to just use all the markings that came with the pattern for the snaps and so that's why I'm, I'm trying not to upset any kind of um, spacing you know I me mean, usually I just don't I just do what I, I want in the moment and maybe I'll change my mind when I see where where it's at but I feel like it's just kind of nice when you can kind of go by something you know let's just iron this real quick All right, let's get that a little more accurate. Okay. That is in such a different place. I can see the original. All right. So these are ready for snaps. So I'll do that off camera so I don't have to bug you guys on that. <laughs> right, Shem? It's like when people say, um, why are you watching football when you could be out playing it? <laughs> I used to be one of those people that said that, and then I, I get it now. I literally watch people play video games, so, you know, I'm not one to talk. Where's my pen cushion? It's right here. Where? Oh, oh, sorry. 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 Here. This is, I, I did one line. So this is how I know none of you are watching. <laughs> Except Barbara. So I have my, these are my side pockets that go centered over the side seam right here. And then they both get snaps. There's two on the flap and two on the pocket. And this is one of the reasons why I didn't put flaps on my back pockets because I only have 12 snaps and this pattern requires 14. If you're gonna do two on each of the back pockets, two on each of the side pockets, uh, you need two for the waistband. You can't compromise there. Um, and then you need, if you want the turnips, and I do. I kind of want the turnips. I never usually, and I think that'll be really useful. You, I think, need, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, you need uh, four for that. <laughs> nice, Shem. <laughs> Shall we sew these front pockets? I think this denim, you know, it, 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 you know, blends in pretty good. All right, let me, let me glance at the seam allowances for this and make sure I do it correctly. Doing a lot of prep today. And then I'll probably call it because I'm kind of getting into assembling the fronts then. Oh yeah, so you finish one longer edge Okay. Night, Sue. Sleep well. Have a good one. All right, so we're going to overlock the longer edge of this front pocket facing. picked a gray thread so that it would blend in on the inside of my pants. Is it? I would like to say that I knew that, but I didn't. <laughs> I love it. It's a wrinkle in there. All right, so I just wanted to see if this piece, there is a notch on it, but I think this piece is symmetrical. 
Yeah. All right, so we're going to sew this to the pocket, half inch seam. It's a gigantic facing, which is kind of cool because it keeps everything in line with the others. Yeah, that's a, that's what I keep meaning to say too, Libby, exactly. Like when you're trying to get into and out of your pocket two snaps, you're just never going to snap them. So, um, and I was thinking if I was wearing my little tool belt, having the back pockets with flaps would just add too much, you know, bulk and it'd be too bulky and hot. So, I can feel something in there, but I think it's just this texture. All right, I want to trim this down. Oh my gosh. My kingdom to cut in a straight line. Oh my gosh. The Trico is, is it's pretty chewy. <laughs> That's a good word for it, chewy. Is, oh, never mind. All right, we're going to press it like this first. Just press the seam allowance towards the facing. Like that, and then we'll turn it again right on the edge there. Oof, that's just so satisfying. And then same here. So you just like, once you've pressed that seam, you get to this side and you want to turn it. And it's kind of like sitting there flat and you go like this, you go whoop. Oh, that is just the good stuff. The good stuff, I say. Yeah. Yeah, or sometimes what I'll do if it's I got two snaps, I'll only do one and then I'll like struggle to get my phone in and out, you know? Um, yeah, I knew what you meant, Barbara. <laughs> I know exactly what you meant. Oh, no, I want to top stitch this first. Get going there. So I'm going to look at this. It's about right there, which is like the eyeball on this little, I have a little, um, oh, you cannot see that. There's no way you can see that. But there's a little um, thing down here. I'm going to line up my edge of my pocket to it to keep my straight line. But I could just use some tape. That's what I usually do. I just use a little bit of tape. And that way I have that guide. Just makes it faster. Not too bad. All right, all right. There's a little dotted line to cut this little tail off, and she probably doesn't cut it off for you just in case you switch left and right. Yeah, Emily, I know. I, I was thinking about one snap, and then I, I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna not do flaps. And then that makes me feel better about doing two snaps on the others. I think magnetic snaps are great then because you're not fighting to line them up and do them. However, they're, those are kind of pricey, you know? All right, so let's put the front pockets on and then uh, we'll adjourn until Saturday. And we're gonna do all the good stuff. Good stuff. 
So this denim doesn't match, but it's not too bad, right? You can't really tell, I know, but um, I think it goes like that. This is, this is something, I think I will pre-iron this edge. This is a little bit more visible. <laughs> yeah, I was picturing Emily army crawling around in her yard, like groping for keys. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, I think we need to change something else here, Emily. Yeah, so before the stream, I was going to try those serger. So Anna in the guild posted this link to all these really helpful serger videos from someone else's YouTube channel. And because she's deep in the rabbit hole of figuring out tension. We did this whole tension or serger zoom. And so she's working on her serger and... Um, there was one just on dealing with the thread tail. So I've been practicing that little method I showed you that I found from Terrence Williams on Instagram. And I'm actually figured out the knack finally. I just am not very consistent about using it. So I'm working on it. You're <laughs> usually falling down. Eventually it'll match. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Let's see, let's do this one, I guess, first then. Oops, that was the right pocket. All right. Let's line up, I'm just gonna line up the notch on the waist and the side. I'm not too worried about the other, oh, here it is. The one right here at the corner. That's the one I'm not too worried about. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, that's awesome. I like seeing other YouTube creators too. I know people are really weird about that kind of thing. You know, and um, if it was someone that was, well, I don't want to say that actually because I think you guys are going to assume something, but um, I'm fine with that. Like, I feel like we should all lift each other up. It's, you know, there's a, Lot of amazing YouTube sewists out there, right? I think the only time I'm like, well, I have a video for that too, you know, is when I have a video for that too. But you know, it's not like it's easy to find anyone's video on YouTube. <laughs> oh. What's HL? We found a tiny hook in HL right next to the seam rippers. Okay, there we go. Well, we could secure this one here. Um, let me look here. Sometimes my tail of my top thread sucks into the bobbin, and I also like to pull on it to, suck, to uh, tighten up the tension, the first few stitches trying to be better about doing that because then when I go to do the next seams later and I see all that thread under there, I'm like, oh, that doesn't look nice, you know? Oh, Hobby Lobby, okay. I don't think I've ever been in one of those. I didn't know they had the sewing section either. Now we're all probably going to get ads from them, huh? Because I'm like, who? <laughs> Sorry. Do I have a preferred stitch length? Um, no, because it changes with my thread. Right now, these stitches, this is uh, the first line past the two, so 2.25. And, you know... It looks good. I think that my machine does a pretty good job of top stitching. I have seen nicer top stitching than what I can do with this machine. And I obviously am not spending all the time I could be calibrating it. You saw me do, ooh. I feel like my little edge is poking out there. Ooh, I'm taking that out, sorry. See that? This is a problem. This is 
one thing I will say when I see people post their makes um, and they're so proud and everything, if you want your stuff to not look homemade, watch for stuff like this. You see how my little edge here is? That's the turn under edge, right? It's kind of poking out there. Get rid of that. It's worth it. That's the kind of thing that, that's going to unravel and create threads and really call attention to it. Oh, okay, cool. Cool, Barbara. Yeah, right, Anna, exactly. Well, and I don't have like a whole serger series. This is awesome. But if someone was like, I'm desperate to sew this garment and I know Ceremy hasn't, or even if I had, because anyone knows so long and someone put someone else's. I mean, that's fine, <laughs> you know, whatever. I'm not using my seam ripper because I'm trying not to cut the thread. It's a little bit easier. This is always what happens right when I'm about to be done. I have a seam like this. I think you all are like, yay, we're gonna stay longer. <laughs> And I'm always like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't go yet. <laughs> you can absolutely go. So maybe I'll talk about my guild since I don't talk about that quite enough, apparently. But if you're interested in being part of a really cool sewing community, just because you see me chatting with like 10 regular people in here, do not think that that excludes you from the community, that you are equal. And just because other people are chattier and we're chatty together, you're not like outside the club, you know? Like I don't want people to feel like that because I feel that way sometimes when I see a stream and I'm like, oh, they all know each other already. But then I realize they're kind of, for me, I'm kind of like, oh good, I don't really have to do all the talking or, you know, if I wanted to talk, they would talk to me. And we absolutely do and we love everybody. So I do have this community called So So Guild. It's free to join. Right now it is. Um, I say that just because it could change. This is an experimental year. It's going really good. We almost have 500 members right now. They're not all there all the time, so don't feel like it's this overwhelming space. But if you ever like log into Instagram or you don't have Instagram and you just want to talk about sewing or you feel overwhelmed by seeing everybody else's makes and you're like, oh, wow, I can't do all that. Or, oh, my family doesn't want to talk sewing with me and I want to ask this question. I don't know where to find this material, this notion. I'm looking for the best machine that does this. Um, I want to share my makes. Um, I want to say, ask, do you guys ever have this problem? It's the perfect place for it because it's only sewing. There's no ads. I don't have companies or brands or anything like that in there selling stuff to you. Um, no one's mining your data. It's a clean space. It's bright. It's, it's, um, it's very powerful. It has a ton of stuff um, in there to do. You can, you can talk directly to anybody you see via private message or in chats. It's, it has likes and comments just like other platforms, but those are kind of fun too. Oh, thanks, Danny. I know, it's, it's kind of amazing because I, I hardly do talk about it as far as like a marketing thing. Um, and, and if you've always wanted to support me somehow because, oh, thanks, Terry, because you like what I do, you can always join a paid group. Even if you don't want to participate in all this stuff, um, you can join a paid group, so. Yeah, I agree, Shem. Like, I hardly ever heard a word from you in the streams. I would, you would say hi. And, um, and now you are, I mean, like, you contribute so much. I love seeing all the things you make. And I would have never gotten to see what you guys are sewing if we didn't have the guild. And the guild is just a play on words. And the names of the groups are a play on words reflecting guild but it doesn't mean you have to be master or apprentice or journeyist level. It's all levels, sizes, pe people shapes, colors of people, orientations of people, genders of people. Everybody is welcome there. And um, yeah, it's awesome. I'm loving it. I'm there sun up to sundown, 
commenting, answering questions, helping people, cheering people on. Um, yeah, except when I'm streaming or doing other things, you know, so. Check it out. And there are guild only things that happen. So, me too, Anna. That's great, Aisha. I'm glad. Oh, it's my pencil. The pencil's just got to go. It's causing me all kinds of problems. I have room for three things here. Three things. <laughs> the fourth just is like too much. That's awesome. I'm glad. Oops, I forgot to cut my thread. Yeah, we have topics you can follow. Um, I don't know what else. Like the topics are all, I, oh, and there's like groups, like there's two free groups right now. Someone in Australia and New Zealand wanted to start a group specifically for those folks. And she, she I think, is she here? Isn't it Taya? I think Taya, she's had a baby. Um, she wanted to hang out with people because, you know, like a lot of us are in different time zones. There's people from all over the world and they are all awake at the same time, but we, a lot of us aren't. And so she created a group and her tagline is really funny because anyone can create a group in there. <clears throat> and it's, um, and it's, it's like a, like a separate forum and I can't, what's her tagline? It's something like where, where the something is something and the shipping prices are prohibitive. <laughs> So, and then we started a capsule wardrobe one, which I have not done enough in, um, but yeah. So yeah, so maybe if someone's like, I wanna start a curvy sewing group, or I wanna sew a, start a petite sewing group, or I wanna start a serger sewing group, you can in there. It's awesome. So anyway, all right, so let's see here. We got our, you can really see the difference in denim color now. These are looking a little 70s. <laughs> All right. We got those. We got our side pockets. We got our quail butts. I think it is under machines topic, Libby, but we can change it if it's not. Wear t-shirts. Yeah, in December are normal and international shipping is financially ruinous. Yes, it's such a good tagline. Are you in there, Danny? <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. I, she wanted to create the the um, avatar for it. Um, I said oh, I can do that, and then I was like, no, I'm gonna let her do that too. And she hasn't, so maybe I should do that for her. But <laughs> her t-shirts in December are normal. <laughs> okay, about troubleshooting tension. You could put it into the machines thing, Anna. Um, all right, well, that's it for me today. So Saturday, we're going to uh, do the fly, side pockets, knee pockets. Oh, okay, yeah, Danny, yeah. And then um, do the waistband. So quite a bit to go, but we did a lot of the fiddly stuff, and now they're ready. We just need some snaps. Uh, I think you'll see me do the snaps on the waistband. All right. We'll save it. We'll, I'll do those on camera. I'll do the others off camera. Oh, maybe the leg strap. Cause I need to sew the leg strap. I'm pretty sure it's under machines. Great. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining me, um, and I'll see you guys on Saturday. Yeah, and if you join the guild, well, actually, this is a paid group thing. Never mind. I was going to say, I'm making a pant form on Saturday in a Zoom. <laughs> I'm not even ready for that. I got to get that ready. Uh, Libby says there's 19 pattern pieces per leg. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think I slotted an hour and a half for that Zoom. Oi. My poor dogs. I'm going to have to go home in between my live stream on Saturday and then go home. Shoot. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'll see you soon. Thanks for coming. Um, I appreciate it. And um, good luck on your embroidery, Shem. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>